video, we're going to take a look at different chord shapes that are movable and will allow you to create a cascading effect that I stumbled upon. I, I didn't make that up, but I, I think this technique has a lot of potential. I'm still working on it. I wanted to share with you what I'm doing, and hopefully this will inspire new ideas to enhance your own creativity. Grab your guitar. We'll get started right after this. Hi, my name is David Wallerman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players around the world find their unique voice, discover their voice, and create something on the instrument that can replicate that voice. That intro is a little different, right? Same message, though. All right, so this lesson comes with a free PDF because I want you to, to watch this lesson, study the concept that I'm going to show you, and then take it and make something of your own, make it your own. This is what this channel is really about. I want this to be an idea that sparks something else, something different that can really um, create something new within you. All right, so that PDF is available for free. The link is below the top line of the video description. Just uh, follow the link, enter a valid email address, and I'll send you the PDF. On the PDF, you're gonna see some traditional chord shapes, traditional in the sense that you, you just see the, the neck diagram in front of you and you'll see some dots. That's the chord, that's where your fingers go. Now, these chords will all have open strings on there. These open strings are the notes that you can add to these chords. You're also gonna find some diamonds on either the sixth or the fifth string. These diamonds are basically showing you the, the frets where you can move these chords to, and I find that these chords sound great if you move them to here. That's just a personal opinion though. I want you to explore the sounds that you, you, you come up with. And before we get started, this lesson is not about naming the chords. That's a little bit irrelevant for what we're doing. We're doing a, a, an exploration of the fretboard, exploration of sounds, and um, hopefully this will trigger ideas without having to be locked into a theory, um, theoretical train of thoughts. I don't want this for this. All right, let me show you the first chord, how it is um, used, and what this technique is all about. This is the first chord. It's similar to uh, a G major, but not quite. Let me show you the close-up. We're going to use our middle finger for the G note, which is our root, and that will be on the sixth string, third fret, and we're going to use our middle finger here. And this is a finger technique, by the way. You can, you can work around with a pick, but for now I'm going to use my finger. My thumb is going to trigger that bass note right here. And then we're going to use these four fingers for the first four strings. Strings four, three, two, and one. Okay, so all together, that'll work. Now the chord shape itself is gonna be with that bass note played with the thumb on the third fret of the sixth string. Then our index finger is gonna be on the third string, second fret. Right here, third string, second fret. And the ring finger is gonna go on the third fret of the second string. That's the chord um, as it is. So if I play this chord, that's what we have, okay? Now notice the diamonds on the sheet, on the low E string. That means that you can simply take that shape and move that shape to some of the diamonds that are listed on the, the fretboard. It sounds good, right? I think. Now, some other diamonds might sound good to you. If you like the sound of this, Go for it. I, I don't want to tell you, don't play this. This is really an exploration game, but those are the diamonds that I find work well for that. Now there's another component to our PDF and that's the open strings. And in this case, you will find some open strings that are in the same string strings as the, the ones where we have fingers. Not all of them, but sometimes. And in this case, we have an open string on the third string open which is covered by that index, right? That's what's going to allow us to do that cascading effect. And you also have an open string on the second string. That means that we can replace those, those uh, fretted notes with open strings. They're always going to work in any combination. Now here's the trick to do that cascading thing. 
Typically, when we have some open strings followed by a fretted string, we tend to play them in order, open and fretted, something like this. Which kind of gives us that cascading effect. But we're going to go a step further to really create some kind of a, um, melodic movements that is a little different than what we might use to, very similar to a cascading thing that is not straight down, but maybe there's some um, um, wrinkles. Ricochet is the French word I'm looking for. I don't, I don't know. French people help me out, but uh, the the water falls down, ricochet up and down again, <laughs> kind of does that thing. And this is how it's done. We're gonna play the the chord with all the possible open strings. We're arpeggiating that. Then we will play those hammer-ons. And if I speed that up, I can make a lot of different combinations. I can either play um, all the open strings and then in order of um, appearance of these strings, play those frets, or maybe I can alternate a little bit, maybe play this. finish the chord and then that, a lot of different combinations available. These combinations are always going to work and you can move those to the diamonds. Right? A lot of cool sounds to be found here. And the, the cool thing is that you're not limited to the chord shapes that are on the PDF. There are a multitude of ones. I listed five of them, five chord shapes that you can, um, you can use to, to, to start some new ideas using that cascading effect. Here's a, a second one. I'll show you the second one, which is very similar to that first one that we played. The only difference here is that instead of having our bass on the sixth string here, we're going to move the bass to the fifth string, same exact fret, third fret, giving us a C, uh, C chord. And then you can explore, maybe instead of fretting this note, maybe we can try with the pinky. That sounds good too. So forth. There are five of these chords that are listed on the PDF that you can get below for free, and there are many more that you're going to discover. But start with these five because they're going to give you the, um, a good basis to start with that technique and write something. When I say write, you don't have to write on a piece of paper, but uh, create something new, record it if you can. And uh, a tip for these chords, uh, I would recommend using a compressor because uh, you're, you're not quite used. Uh, we are not quite used as guitar players to sometimes fret some uh, or hammer on some of these notes. For instance, in that first one that I showed you with the ring finger, that's a little bit difficult to reach, especially on the second string, which is a thin string. And when you hammer on thin ones, it's a little bit harder because you don't have as much, uh, well, as much string to, to tap on. So use a compressor to boost the the low volume notes so that everything is more or less in the same volume range. So you don't have some notes that are really low, which typically will be those, those fretted notes. So use a compressor, that's my tip. And then combine a couple of these chords. Maybe that if I cr combine the first chord that I showed you with the second one and use those diamonds, start creating a song. And if you find some diamonds that don't really work for you, what I mean by diamonds, those are the movable bass notes, take note of that and try to avoid it next time. If you play, you don't like it in that context, well, take a mental note. It's really important not to overthink this, um, or at least it's really important, I think for now, not to tie some theory to that. Yes, I love music theory, but I don't think music theory should, um, should be the main ingredient when you're composing something. Your ear should be the, the main participant in 
the composition process. Theory helps you get unstuck and, and it's very valuable. But for now, we're just exploring the fretboard with these things. And uh, there are so many, so many chord shapes that you can, that will work with them. Combining that with traditional chords will really help too. You don't have to use that all the time. And then if you add sometimes some melodic lines, well, you'll have something pretty cool, I think. That's what I have for you. You can, here we go, <laughs> we can, uh, you can download the PDF. It is free and I, I recommend that you do that because it'll, it'll help you when you're sitting down with your instruments, practice this. You'll remember the technique that I just showed you and uh, explore and write some new ones if you find some new ones out there. And actually, if you do, I would love to have some suggestions. Maybe below you, you can write in the comment section some of these chords, movable chords that you have found and discovered. If this is your first visit, you should consider subscribing. Why? Because every week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, there's a new video like this one that hopefully sparks some new creative ideas and help you go a little further and be closer to who you really are on the instrument, which is what this channel is all about. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you very soon on the channel. Practice well.